Okay. So we're going to record this for the others. So welcome everyone. Um, we are looking at alcohols, alcohols, alkanoic acids, acids and alkanoic acids and esters. All right. Um, what we're going to be looking at today in particular is alcohols. So there's a few things that we need to know about alcohols. Um, one of the things that we need to know um, as well is what they really entail, some of the reactions that they're going to be taking that can occur between alcohols, um, as well as how do you name isomers of alcohols. I think um, from the past classes that we would have had, you will have the opportunity or you should know exactly how to name um, organic compounds in general. So there are some things that each individual should know. One of the first things that you need to know when you're naming an organic compound is what? Just checking back. You need to, um, you need to, the end part of it is its functional group. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, the number of carbon uh, at the longest carbon chain mm -hmm. is um, uh, is usually labeled with like the meth s propute. Okay, based on words. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, somebody else was saying something too. Tamia, who else? You, you start from uh, the closest carbon mm -hmm. when i uh off a branch chain you name it from the closest carbon mm -hmm. um uh, and uh, that has it y was it y l at the end yeah mm -hmm. anytime you have the the branches the branches carries an ill that's correct yeah it's and that has it starts with like um the number of the carbons is like the original ones we used um mm -hmm. like um is based like on the number tetra the um yeah okay so based on the number yeah. of substituents that we have if they are the same you use uh you use a prefix to identify the number of Mm. Um, and when we say substituents, we're referring to branches. Yes. Right, so, so you are you are correct in that case. That's that's correct. All right. So what what we're gonna be looking at? We're gonna take a look at the alcohols, and in looking at alcohols, we want to take some of these things that we will have learned before, and address them when we coming to to learn alcohols. But we we're going ahead. So in all right so we would have touched on some of the review questions just to review a little bit um when an alcohol or what we refer to as alcohols and alkanoic acids and esters are organic compounds that all contain oxygen so these compounds they all contain oxygen all right um although although they contain oxygen their properties and reactions differ because of the way in which they are bonded okay so i'm moving satoya a little bit all right all right so in just the way it's just the way in which they are bonded okay that differs the way in which the organic compound is going to function all right um because of their varied properties and reaction and, and reaction members of these three homologous series have a widespread of uses in industry and in our, our, our daily lives due to the difference that we will have in these structures and these different structures resulting to them resulting in them having different properties chemical and physical properties they would have different applications 
and these different applications um, can be used in our everyday lives and in industries. Okay, so having the knowledge of these hydrocarbons are very important because even even in this particular situation now that we are we are we are being um, placed in with the coronavirus, there is an there is one of these homologous series that most individuals tend to look to go and buy, and everyone knows what that is, right? Huh? Mm. What 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 do everyone looks look to go to buy in these Alcohol? times? Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. So alcohol, mentholated spirit, and all and of sanitizer. these and sanitizers, <laughs> excellent. So we see how important these are, even in these times that we would have here, for for these different applications. All right. So let's up ahead. So we're looking at alcohols. So what do we know about alcohols? Alcohols, also known as alcohols. And in addition to that, we are seeing here the general formula, which is CNH, 2N plus 1 OH, something that we are familiar with. And another name in which we call alcohols, we call them alkanols, right? Mainly because it contains an alkane group with a OH in it. Um, later on, when you advance in chemistry, you're going to realize that also alkenes can contain OH groups and they can fall under alcohols as well, all right? So will you send this slide to us? Yes, I will send this slide to you all. Okay, cool. All right, so they are organic compounds and they are characterized by a hydroxyl group. The hydroxyl group is referred to, let me just, yeah. hydroxyl group is referred to as this OH portion of the group, all right? That's the functional group. That's what identifies an alcohol to be an alcohol. So alcohols with three or more carbon atoms show structural isomerism. This is a little bit different from what we have learned with, um, what you call it? Um, alkenes and alkenes. Um, you're, do you remember when do we have structural isomerism with alkenes and alkenes? Or when we have four carbons, that's correct, all right? So when we begin with four carbons, that's when all structural isomers begin with alkenes and alkenes. However, in this case with alcohols, mm -hmm. alcohols began, begin at three, all right? Mm -hmm. So how, how, how is that? Let's take a look into the structural isomers of alcohols result from the following. One, the change in the position of the functional group that is the change in position of the hydroxyl um, group and also the branching of the molecules. So those are the two things that cut categorize them. One, the alkenes would have had a category, um, would have had this as well, where we would have the position of the double bond. All right? Changing. Changing. Excellent. So in this case, it's just the position of the OH group changing. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's where we that's where we look at the differences between an alcohol. Okay, excuse me. All right, so we're seeing an example here on the corner on that's your right hand side. Of, uh, um, what you're trying to get the name? No, I'm just clo closing oh. off the cameras and moving it so I could see it. Okay. So we have, where we see here now, we have um, the OH group, which, which categorize an alcohol, all right? So we're stepping ahead. Ethanol. Yes, that's correct, that's ethanol. So when naming isomers of alcohols, what do we take into consideration? Now before, they say, it, it was stated that uh, alcohol, what categorizes its change in an isomer is based on the OH group, right? So we're taking an example here one time. So numbering the carbon atoms in the longest chain from the ends closest to the OH functional group so that the group is the lowest, which is the functional group number indicated, indicate the position 
of the hydroxyl in the name. So I'll, I'll see if I could rewrite this and make it a little bit more straightforward and simple. It's basically saying that the name is ca 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 um, categorized by, of course, the longest chain, but the longest chain must constitute that um, OH, the functional group, okay? So that's one of the one of the prime ways in which we name an alcohol. So in this case, we're looking at the first one. There is four carbons and four stands for butte. And we see the OH group, which means that it's an alcohol. So we'll call this butanol. But when we're dealing with an isomer, since we say that isomers begin from three and above, all right, but we're looking at a four carbon one here, the OH group is found on the first carbon. So when we are when we are numbering the constituents or the functional group or the carbons, we give the functional group the lowest number. The functional group takes that precedence to have the lowest number. So the OH group is now referred to as being on the first carbon. I would not number from this side and say one, two, three, four, and call this um the OH group being on the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. so that would be wrong because the road the, the rule is that it must be must have the the lowest um number. All right. Okay. Somebody was saying something, Kaya? Anybody? It should have the lowest number of carbons. Okay, very good. So in this so in this case, this is referred to as but one all or one butanol. So let's look, we're talking about the isomerism now. The, we are now going to move the OH group. So we move the OH group and we put it on the second carbon. So when we move it, you can't move it and put it back here. It's the same carbon that it would have been attached to, just as in the other cases when we would have done other isomers. So I, we say we put it on the adjacent carbon. And by placing the OH group here now, we get a change in the isomer. So it's different. So we have, in this case, the OH group or the hydroxyl group being on the second carbon. So we count one, two, and not one, two, three. We keep the lowest possible number. So it's but two all, all right, or two butanol. And then we have the other isomers where we can have branches. So this is why we said, remember how we name branch chain isomers. So we apply that same um, concept that we would have learned before. And we name the branches now. Of course, the OH takes precedent of the lowest possible number. So we have one, two, which is in this case, well, we'll look at this one here. Okay, there's an error here. This name is to be up here, and this name is supposed to be down here. You all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So why is that? Let's look at this. This OH is under? The first. The first carbon. Okay. So we count one because the OH must take precedent. So we one, two. The branch is under second carbon. Okay, yeah. so yes, it is correct to say two methyl in this case, but the OH group is under. Can you just slide across because I can't see it. No, you could take, you could go you to the top to of the top. camera and move yeah. the uh, yeah. camera view. That. Or you could shrink them in so there's only, there's none. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> All right, you got through? Yeah, I'm good. All right, good. Everybody's there, right? Just making sure. All right, so what, where we have, in this case, we have, this is now going to be 2-methyl-prop-1-ol, which is this name here. So I have to change, make that change, right? And this one in this case is going to be 1-2. The OH is on the second carbon, all right? That's the lowest possible number that we can have. And we have the branch being the one on the outside, which is also on the second carbon. So we have one, two, so it's gonna be two methyl prop two all in this case, all right? Prop two all. 
All right. Everybody understood, um, understands that there so far? Going over one more time. All right. So we're going to go over one more time. So one of the first ways in which we do our isomers, the first step is by moving the, the functional group. All right. So we're going to move the functional group instead. And when we move it, we move it onto the adjacent carbon to make it okay. different. If we connect it to the same carbon, it's going to be the same compound. All so right. The first step is to move the functional group. Yes, move the functional group to the adjacent carbon. All right, that's when you join your isomers. All right, I'm going to take the opportunity and do, a, um, I'm going to stop sharing this particular screen and I'm going to share a whiteboard here. Everyone seeing the whiteboard? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's look at a, a carbon chain of three, right? So we're looking at three. One, two, three. All right? So this is will be we refer to as being propanol, right? Propanol. So propanol is going to have an OH group here. Right. Okay. So we're gonna have our hydrogens connected. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So propanol. But in the case, um, in the first case, we said that we are going to name it. This can form an isomer, mm -hmm. and we need to name it based on the number that the OH group is on. All right. Mm -hmm. Which is on one. Which yeah. is on one. One. So, so this is going to be one, one pro one propanol. Propan. Or mm. propan one all. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, as we go to make the isomer, we are going to move the functional group. Okay. Right. And we move the functional group to an adjacent carbon. So in this case, we're going to have the OH group being placed right here. And in this case, the hydrogen is going to be here. So this is now changed. This is not the same compound that we had before. This no. is now huh? propanol. It is propanol, but watch which one? Two. All right. Two so propanol. two propanol. All right. Based on where the OH group OH is. is. Right, very good. So now let's look at the case where we dealt with the um, four carbon chain. All right, so we're taking an, uh, an opportunity to look at our four carbon chain. So we're going to draw some isomers for a four carbon one, two, three, four. Okay, so we have all our bonds, each carbon takes four bonds. And we're adding the OH group. So the first part, we add the OH group was on the first carbon. So we know we have the hydrogens on all. All right. So here it is. We have this, and the name of this compound would be what? One butanol. One butanol, right? That is correct. One butanol. So, and of course, we know that's based on where the OH group oh, is. Yeah. Right. So now we need to shift the OH group. We're going to make a new isomer and we place it on the adjacent carbon. So you have. Nice. So good. So this is going to be called what now? Two butanol. Two butanol. Correct. Two butanol. Okay, so what, what we say in this case, we also explore, try to see if we could carry it down to the next, next group. So let's move it to our next adjacent car one. Let's see if it's going to change. No, nope, it'll be the same. It's going to be the yeah. same? You sure? You sure? Positive? Yeah, yep. One. One. yep. From the next end. Okay. So we have here, and you are correct. It's going to be the same thing. 
because as we count, as we count the different one, two, which will be the lowest end, or we if, if we count, we can't count from the next end. We can't count and go one, two, three, because this is going to be the highest number. Highest. So we keep the lowest, lowest number, which is two. So it's gonna be two butyl now. Okay. So mm. very good, very good so far. Very good, excellent. So let's look at let's look at now where we have sorry let me put that black now where we have to deal with or isom the other isomers now so we had our oh group here so the next step in this case since we can't make any more isomers from shifting or OH, we have two so far, two butanol and one butanol. The next step is to actually move to form branches. So we take off a carbon and we add it to an adjacent carbon. So in this case here, I'm just gonna put CH3 just to And in this case, we're going to have a new compound or a new isomer being formed. And we're going to name it by doing what? What do we learn? What do we name first? Um, you name, you mark you off by the closest by the hydroxyl group. All right. Um, so that would be wine propanol down here. Uh -huh. Down at the bottom. Okay. So, and our longest chain is three, so that is correct. Okay. All right. So, the meeting will end in 10 minutes and then we go start back again, right? Okay. 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 So, what, what we have is propanol. So, we know that is one propanol. So, let's see how well we can. <laughs> So we know we have, we're dealing with one propanol, for sure, mm -hmm. based on the longest chain. This is the longest chain that we have. And this is our branch. And our branch here is a? On the second on the carbon. Second. And it's a methyl, so right? Two methyl. Very good. So it, since it's on the second carbon, we would refer to it as being, we put a dash here, and we put methyl. So it's gonna be two, two dash methyl one propanol. One propanol. Okay. okay, and that's very good. So conceivably, organic compounds names can end up being massive. Jeez. Yes, they can. But <laughs> as you as you go on, you're going to realize something. They can. They develop other ways of making them shorter. Ah. Uh, yeah, so we don't so, do that at this level, but there are the other. Methyl? The methyl huh? is there because of the like the extra carbon chain on the outside. Yeah, the um the carbon chain, the carbon, carbon. Yeah, the carbon branch. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So we um I'm going to stop the uh, the meeting and then I'm we, I'm going to send you back a new one because the meeting okay. so we can have uh, a, a new one. All right, so this is what we have so far. More than 30 carbons. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll be convening in a few minutes. I'm going to send you guys the, the link. Okay.